My fellow Americans, this is my country. Many of us have fought hard for the right to say that. Many are now struggling today from the Harlem to Da Nang so that they may say this with conviction. This is our country. We are a people in a quandary about the present. We are a people in search of our future. We must make the American people hear our tale of two cities. We must convince them that we don't have to settle for two cities, that we can have one city, indivisible, shining for all of its people. If you give us a chance, we can perform. After all, Ginger Rogers did everything that Fred Astaire did. She just did it backwards and in high heel. There is not a liberal America and a conservative America. There is the United States of America. There is not a black America and a white America and Latino America and Asian America. There's the United States of America. The American dream is not a sprint or even a marathon, but a relay. Our families don't always cross the finish line in the span of one generation, but each generation passes on to the next the fruits of their labor. We are one people, all of us pledging allegiance to the Stars and Stripes, all of us defending the United States of America. Welcome. Welcome. Welcome to the, to the second, second night of the Democratic, Democratic National, National Convention. Convention. This is a different kind of convention. Look at the camera and smile. And this. This is a different kind of keynote. Is a different kind of keynote. This, this year, all of us are on stage. And we've got, got a lot to say. say. Let's get real. There's a lot riding on this election. When we're facing the biggest economic and health crisis in generations, because our president didn't and still doesn't have a plan. When doctors, nurses, and home health care aides in Philadelphia have to risk their own lives to protect others because there's not enough protective equipment. When factory workers in Ohio are faced with dangerous conditions because this administration hasn't given clear guidance on how to protect our people. When teachers in Gwinnett County, Georgia and across the country are being asked to return to the classroom without a plan to keep them safe and parents are exhausted juggling full-time work and full-time childcare and visiting our parents and grandparents through the window of a nursing home, worrying all the time that they'll get sick. When unemployment in North Charleston, South Carolina, a city I represent has risen nearly fourfold, and evictions are putting families out on the street in the middle of a pandemic. Make no mistake, it didn't have to be this bad. In the early days of the virus, Donald Trump didn't listen to the experts. And then he said something that a president should never say. He said, I don't take responsibility at all. No responsibility. No leadership. No plan. He still doesn't have a plan. Donald Trump just doesn't understand. We can't fix our economy until we get a hold of the virus. While working families are struggling, he's looking out for the people who are already doing just fine. The wealthy, the big corporations, the donors to his campaign. He's looking out for himself. But there's one person who's looking out for us. All, All of, of us. us. And that's Joe Biden. Joe called it. We are in a battle for the soul of our nation. But Joe knows we can never let hard times turn us against each other. And we can never stop doing the hard work to make things right. That's, that's why, why we ran, ran for office. office. Even, Even when, when people count us out. out even when there had never been a Latina in the Nevada State Senate. Or a Democrat elected as Florida Commissioner of Agriculture in nearly three decades. Or an openly gay man in the Georgia State Legislature. When Birmingham hadn't had a mayor this young in 120 years. We ran for office because we know the struggles American families are facing, because we've lived them. We've lived the insecurity and the indignity 
of an eviction notice. I, like many of you, have lived the frustration of paying off student loans. We have lived the grief of losing loved ones to gun violence and the criminal justice system that unfairly targets our communities. We have lived that feeling of helplessness when someone you love is very sick and access to health care is a matter of life and death. By the way, Joe Biden has lived a lot of this too. He was raised in a middle class family in Scranton, Pennsylvania and Claymont, Delaware. He watched his dad look for work and learned that a job is about so much more than a paycheck. It's about dignity and respect. He was sworn into office from the hospital room of his two young sons after a car crash killed his wife and infant daughter. He knows what it's like to thank God you have health care. He knows what it's like to work hard for everything you've got. He knows what it's like to send a child off to war. And he'll never forget who he's fighting for. I look around my district in North Texas, and I see the people who built this country, the educators, like the single mom who raised me, the men and women on the front lines of our healthcare system. You built this country. Small business owners, like the ones whose shops and restaurants line the streets of Birmingham, Michigan. Charleston, South Carolina. Of tribal nations. Line the streets of Philadelphia and bring our communities to life. You built this country. The nurses in Memphis who came out of retirement to treat patients during this pandemic, you built this country. And you know what? You deserve more than the constant chaos that Donald Trump delivers. You deserve health care you can afford, a job that pays you fairly. You deserve child care and paid sick leave while you work. And when you pay into Social Security and Medicare, you deserve to know it will be there when you retire. And, and that's, that's why we ran. ran. And thanks to the voters across the country, in both red states and blue states, we, we won. won. A new generation of leaders is rising up. And with Joe Biden in the White House, there's no limit to what we can do. In Nevada, we're making drug prices more transparent. So people with chronic illnesses won't go broke while drug companies get rich. Joe's working to protect and expand the Affordable Care Act. He'll make sure millions of people keep their coverage and no one can be denied for a pre-existing condition. He'll bring down the cost of health care and prescription drugs too, giving tax credits to working families and allowing Medicare to negotiate drug prices. That's a big effing deal. That's, That's a, big a big effing deal. deal. Because Joe knows we can't have a healthy economy if people can't afford health care. But let's remember, Donald Trump is suing to take health care coverage away from more than 20 million Americans and eliminate protections for over 100 million with pre-existing conditions. In the, in the middle, middle of, of a pandemic. pandemic. In Texas, we're standing up for fierce women like my mom and my tias who raised me to never back down from a tough fight. So we're fighting to make sure that mothers have access to health screenings for safe pregnancies and childbirth. And we're bringing long overdue justice to survivors of sexual assault. Joe Biden has been fighting for women his entire career. As Senator, he authored the Violence Against Women Act. And as president, he'll restore funding for Planned Parenthood. He will codify Roe v. Wade and make reducing maternal mortality, especially for women of color, a top priority. In Florida, on the front lines of our climate crisis, we're working to produce more renewable energy and shrink our carbon footprint. Joe has a major plan to invest in clean energy jobs and infrastructure. In the House of Representatives, we're closing loopholes to ensure local infrastructure projects use American-made materials and local labor and support American manufacturing. Unlike Donald Trump, Joe Biden will actually enforce Buy American rules, investing in American-made clean energy, building materials, high-tech equipment, and R&D, all creating more good jobs. In Michigan, we're banning business practices that have exploited workers and cost them hundreds of millions of dollars in lost wages. When unemployment is the highest rate since the Great Depression, when millions of people have seen their hours and pay slash, Joe knows it's not enough to rebuild the economy the way it was before. We've got to build it back better. He'll build an economy that rewards work, not wealth. 
and get rid of the Trump tax cuts that only benefit big corporations and the rich. And then he'll invest in healthcare, education, and infrastructure, and in getting small businesses up and running again. Take it from me, when you're in the trenches, you want Joe Biden right there next to you. When I wanted to marry the man I loved, Joe Biden was the first national figure to support me and my family. Appreciate you, man. When the auto industry was going under, Joe stuck his neck out to protect it and helped save one and a half million auto jobs. When our economy was on the brink, Joe led the recovery effort that created millions of jobs, including here in Western Pennsylvania. Under his leadership, America bounced back with the longest economic expansion in history. You know, the one Trump brags about creating? That's what happens when Joe Biden is in your corner. Working families get a fair shot. He understands that leadership means fighting for the people who built this country. All of you. All, all of us. us. This nation belongs to all of us. And in every election, we choose how we will create a more perfect union. Not by taking sides, but by taking stock of where we are and what we need. This year's choice could not be more clear. America faces a triple threat, a public health catastrophe, an economic collapse, and a reckoning with racial justice and inequality. So our choice is clear. A steady, experienced public servant who can lead us out of this crisis just like he's done before, or a man who only knows how to deny and distract a leader who cares about our families, or a president who only cares about himself. We know Joe Biden. America, we need Joe Biden. To make your voice heard, text VOTE to 30330. In a democracy, we do not elect saviors. We cast our ballots for those who see our struggles and pledge to serve, who hear our dreams and work to make them real who defend our way of life by protecting our right to vote. Faced with a president of cowardice, Joe Biden is a man of proven courage. He will restore our moral compass by confronting our challenges, not by hiding from them or undermining our elections to keep his job. In a time of voter suppression at home and authoritarians abroad, Joe Biden will be a champion for free and fair elections for a public health system that keeps us safe, for an economy that we build back better than before, and for accountability and integrity in our system of justice. We stand with Joe Biden, because this isn't just about defeating Donald Trump. We are in this to win for America. So let's get it done.